the Second World War turned the globe into a battlefield. Over 80 years later, the war is fast slipping out of living memory, but the remains of that terrible conflict can still be found all around us today. From mega bunkers to bullet holes, shipwrecks to cemeteries. I'm James Rogers, a war historian who is fascinated by these time capsules. They tell us the stories of death and glory, ingenuity and desperation. Now, for the History Hit YouTube channel, I'll be looking for the last traces of World War II. By the end of June 1940, the Allied forces in the West had collapsed. The Nazi Reich now commanded a coastline that stretched from the French border with Spain in the south right up to the northern Norwegian Arctic. Hello, I'm James Rogers and I'm here exclusively for History Hit on the northern French coast near Calais. Now, it is bloody windy and on a normal day, a nice sunny day, you could look right out here and see the white cliffs of Dover. Of course, you can't see that today and we're not here for that anyway. Instead, we're here to see some of Hitler's coastal defences, some big Nazi guns. Initially, the German forces used their enormous railway guns that could be bought at the coast quickly, but their fixed orientation, depending on the direction of the track, meant that they were only suitable for firing at static targets. However, shortly after, heavy naval guns were brought up to the French coast. Positioned in strategic locations between Bologna and Calais, the closest point to the UK from mainland Europe, they were perfectly positioned to rain down fire on Allied shipping that was trying to dash through the narrow straits. The first was Battery Siegfried, followed by Grosser Kurfürst, Friedrich August, Prince Heinrich and Oldenburg. And by September 1940, the guns were installed, ranging from 24cm calibre weapons at Oldenburg right up to the monster 38cm calibre at Siegfried. The next stage of the project would alone take almost two years to complete. Once the guns were installed, they were enveloped in mega concrete casemates. The most powerful battery was Siegfried, made up of four casemates. In 1942, just before it was officially ready, it was renamed from Siegfried to Tote. This was in honour of the recently deceased Fritz Tote, the mastermind behind Nazi concrete infrastructure across the Reich. And remarkably, in this small wood just along the coast from Cap Green A, the remains of Battery Tote still exist today. Wow, that is incredible. Monumental in scale. Each casemate was made from 12,000 cubic metres of concrete and 800 tonnes of reinforced steel bars. The structures measured about 20 metres in total, with almost half of it being underground. The walls are 3.5 metres thick 
and were built to be able to take whatever the RAF could throw at it. The scale of this thing is insane. The size of the guns in here. Think of the sound. The thud as it fired towards Dover. The poor people of Dover. The guns could fire an 800 kilogram shell over 22 miles. This meant that both Allied shipping and the British mainland were in the totes crosshairs. The Straits of Dover were given the nickname Hellfire Corner, and the town of Dover was regularly pummeled. What the Germans had done here was create a battleship on land. In fact, the guns were the same as those mounted on the mighty German warships Bismarck and Tirpitz. These huge guns were housed in the cathedral-like firing chamber. It's 11 meters high, which allowed the guns to elevate from minus four degrees to 60 degrees and allowed a 120 degree angle of rotation. Beneath the ground, there was storage for the ammunition, accommodation for the men, and communications posts that would link all the guns, not just tote, but all the batteries to a central observation point on the coast. In total, there would be a garrison of almost 400 men manning the guns of the tote battery. And it's those men who have left us one final astonishing surprise deep down in the subterranean chambers of the casemates. Oh, wow. One of the things I find so remarkable about this place is amongst all of this modern graffiti, what you have is some original graffiti by the Nazi soldiers themselves, some of which starts to mock Churchill's chances of winning just a little bit. From Churchill's cigar smoke changing from victory to SOS, Nazi symbols and slogans, through to a decidedly dejected looking Churchill caricature left disappointed by the alliance with Russia, these walls are covered. A relic of how invincible the men of the tote battery felt inside their massive gun emplacements. But to really understand the power of these huge batteries and the fear they cause the Allies throughout the war, you can't stay on the ground. Instead, you've got to take to the skies around them. Once in the air, the landscape becomes clear because the area around Tote and the other batteries was absolutely decimated by the Allies in 1944. From the air, you can clearly see the massive shell holes caused by RAF bombardment and artillery fire from Allied troops clearing the Channel coast. The 18 guns of the German Channel coast batteries were finally silenced at the end of September 1944. But right up to the end, the guns were almost all functioning and still firing, a testament to the enormous engineering projects that brought them into being. <laughs> 